everybody. Welcome to Tales of Two. Again, here at Cedar Run. I'm Miss Erin. Also with me today is Miss Rachel. She's going to be my assistant. <laughs> As you can see, even though we're in the same room, we are socially distant without our masks on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we're trying to pay attention to all our rules. If you're anywhere near us, I'm sure you know it's very crummy looking outside. It's not currently raining, so we had to broadcast in today just in case. So I can give everybody a few seconds to join our stream today, but we want to thank everyone who's been joining us. Also, any new folks, welcome. Hopefully you enjoy our little presentation here. We've been trying to touch on a lot of different subjects, uh, reach children as well as adults. Today is going to be a little more child-oriented program, but we will have an education ambassador and one of our animals at the end. So hang on if you aren't interested in this, you're hopefully or if you're watching this on replay, you can always fast forward the video. <laughs> I'm okay with this. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're going to get started for this afternoon. So we are presenting what I'm calling We Love the Nightlife. <laughs> I know, I come up with corny names. I try to keep it fresh. So we're going to be talking a little bit about animals that do like the nighttime. So as you all know, they're called nocturnal animals. Um, we also are going to talk about some daytime animals and how those guys are a little bit different from our and anyone that wants to learn a new word, a daytime animal, which we don't talk about too often because we're daytime animals, we see all the daytime animals. If you're an animal that comes out during the day, you're called diurnal. So the nighttime animals are nocturnal. The daytime animals are diurnal. And there are some animals that kind of fall in between. So maybe they're an animal that likes to come out at the sort of daylight times. So maybe as the sun is rising or the sun is setting, they don't like it too sunny, but they don't like it too dark. So those guys that kind of fall somewhere in between are called crepuscular. So that's your word for the day, guys, crepuscular. So that means you like sunrise and sunset. So there's lots of animals that do like that time of day. I'm sure if you kind of think about it, you might think of some animals that you might see really early in the morning or as the sun. So I have a bunch of animal masks, and we're gonna try to figure out whether those animals are gonna or, or where those animals are gonna fit back behind us. So they're either gonna be a nocturnal animal, somebody that comes out pretty much exclusively at night in the dark, whether they're a diurnal animal, they're a daytime guy who loves the sunshine, or if they're an animal that falls somewhere kind of in between, that crepuscular animal. So either sunrise or sunset, when it's not too bright, but also not too dark. Okay, so I'm gonna start with my easy one. What do you guys think? Is he a nighttime animal or a daytime animal or somewhere in between? As I dress up in my crazy mask. All right, this is our easy one. So everyone knows that our friends the owls are nocturnal, but there are a couple of them a bit crepuscular. And there's actually one kind of owl that a lot of you all have heard of, the snowy owl. The snowy owls actually are dire. They're mostly out in the day. The owls are nocturnal. Uh oh, we lose it. It's because it's raining. It has a certain <laughs> Stick with us, friends, if you lose connection. It's starting to rain, and Cedar Run's internet is kind of iffy in the rain and in bad weather. All right, so the next one up is my friend, the snake. So there are some snakes that don't apply to the rule, but most of our snakes are going to fall where? Anybody know? Handing it over to my friend, Rachel. Oh, my God. <laughs> In the sunshine. So if you're a reptile, like a snake or a turtle, you need the sunshine to warm your body up. So if you're not out in the sun, it's going to be hard for you to regulate your temperature. These animals are cold-blooded, and these are temperatures different depending on what it's like outside. There are a few types of snakes, though, that are nocturnal, and they're usually the ones that live in a place where it's very, very, very hot in the, in the daytime. So animals that maybe live in the desert going to be out a little bit more in New Jersey. All right. My friend, the raccoon. Daytime, nighttime, somewhere in the middle. guy. We know that we're not going to see him too often in the daytime. And a lot of times when people see him in the daytime, they get a little nervous. They think things are wrong with raccoons. And it is possible that a raccoon be sick if you see him in the daytime. But sometimes they might just be waking up to find a snack, go to the bathroom, get a drink. Just like you guys do in the middle of the night. So if you see one in the daytime, definitely stay away from them, just in case. But it's not too weird for them to be up a bit in the daytime. All right, next one. My friend's 
the deer. So if you guys live around here, if you live around Cedar Run, I'm sure you have seen deer all over the place, right? Think about the times that you normally see them. Are they nocturnal? Are they diurnal? Or are they that crepuscular? Somewhere in the middle. This guy's floppy. He's waving. <laughs> <laughs> so deer are kind of a funny one. We can pretty much find them at any time of the day, right? But for the most part... Deer night, somebody yeah. said. So we see them a lot in the nighttime when we're driving our cars. But for the most part, they're the most active in the dawn and dusk hours. So we'll find them very early in the morning if you get up early for school or early for work. And you'll also see them sometimes as the sun is setting, right, as maybe you're driving home. But we will see them in the bright, bright day time too, and we will see them in the dark. So they're kind of an animal that has a very varied schedule. They're all over the place. All right, goofy one. <laughs> <laughs> <He's not there. laughs> okay. So we have our boy, right? And I'm sure you guys know most people, most humans, are going to be out in the daytime. But there are lots of folks that kind of have a nocturnal sort of schedule, right? I'm sure you think doctors that work at night, people that don't <laughs> like to get up too early in the morning and are night owls, right? But there's lots of professions, lots of different jobs that you might need to have a nighttime schedule and you might sleep in the daytime. But for the most part, it's going to be a person being up in the daytime and sleeping most of the time in the nighttime. All right. Turtle. It's impossible to find turtle mascots unless it's a ninja turtle. <laughs> So this one's on us. <laughs> so our friends, the turtles, are similar to our other reptile friends, like the snakes. They have to warm their bodies up in the sunshine. So in order to maintain up when the sun is out. All right, next one. What do you guys think? Give you all a couple seconds. <laughs> yeah, the internet keeps going in and out, so. Yeah, all right. So our friends, the eagles, are also out in the day. So the owls have excellent nighttime vision to help them hunt for their food when it's dark outside. They have much larger eyeballs. Lots of nocturnal animals have very, very big eyes to see in the dark. So this guy's hunting for similar things, but he's doing it in the daytime. So he has to have very good vision in the day rather than very, very good vision at the night. Okay. Next. Awesome, awesome, someone said, yes. And flying squirrels are all nocturnal. So this guy is going to be hanging out in the dark. Right? So flying squirrels are really cool. Right? We see regular squirrels, gray squirrels, during the daytime. But flying squirrels have very large eyes, and they kind of glide between the trees in the dark. So if we had a possum, that would be up there too. And so would the mice. The mice hang out there as well. All right. Last one. I know where this time. My friend the fox. So foxes are a little hard to find. They're usually pretty shy. They avoid humans. You guys think daytime, nighttime, or in between? 
We're getting answers. Hang yeah. on. We had somebody say, I didn't know we had them in the state, meaning the flying. Oh, we do. Yes. They're very hard to find because they're out in the nighttime. A lot of times people don't see them. Most people, when they do find a flying squirrel, are they're tucked up in their attic or something like that. So then we do have flying squirrels in New Jersey, which is pretty cool. And someone said, fox in the dark. Ugh. This one's a tricky one, too. He's kind of like the deer. So the deer we do see in the dark, and the deer we do see in the daytime. But the fox is actually like dawn and dusk a little bit more. So he's a crepuscular animal, too. So you may see him in the very, very dark. But most of the time, he's going to be sunrise, sunset. Right? So we've got all our buddies up here. As you guys can see, our daytime animals are ones that either need to be in the sunshine to warm up their bodies, or they're out in the sunshine in order to hunt better with the vision that they have. Our friends that are crepuscular, they don't want to be out when it's too sunny because maybe a predator of theirs might be out. And they also don't want to be out in the dark because maybe they can't see as well in the nighttime. And then our nocturnal animals are maybe hunting other animals that come out in the dark. And they all are kind of adapted to have very large eyes and other things to help them to see better in the dark. Right? They also may have very good hearing, so if they don't see something, they know it's there by using their ears. You all ready to visit with our, our friend? Does anyone have any questions before we visit with somebody? If you do, I'll answer as we go. <laughs> so Miss Rachel is getting our friend ready. We haven't seen this guy tell the two for a while, so I thought he would be a good one to share with you guys today. So his name, as Miss Rachel is getting ready, is Houdini. And Houdini is one of our great horn apps. So all that, as you guys know, if you've ever been to Cedar Run, any of the animals that we used to teach with are all ones that came into our hospital and aren't releasable. So that means something's wrong with them, that they can't live out in nature on their own anymore. So in the case of Houdini, which you may see as he comes out, is he had an injured wing. And because of how his wing got broken, he's no longer able to fly. So like these animals, he wouldn't be able to hunt in the wild anymore with the injury that he has. All right, he's almost ready. Rachel's going to come and sit down with him. We'll see if he likes it. He shall be. Because we're 
we're only doing virtual programs. A lot of our animals aren't getting used as much. So they're going on walks and they're working with our volunteers, but they're not getting used for programming like this or programming at schools. So we've kind of gotten out of the, the flow. Will he eat a squirrel and how much does he weigh? Oh, good questions. So he will definitely eat a squirrel. He would probably eat a flying squirrel if he found one of those. He can eat bats, he can eat mice, he'll eat snakes. Does and he eat skunks as well? He does eat skunks as well. So skunks, as you guys might know, skunks are also nocturnal. And the only predator that a skunk really has, at least around where we live, is the great horned owl. So skunks are about the size of a medium cat. Small cat? I said large cat. Large cat? Phoebe <laughs> <laughs> is the size of a large cat. Phoebe is the size of a large cat. Phoebe is large cat. <laughs> so he is able to eat an entire skunk. Normally his food isn't going to be quite that big, but they do love to eat skunks. Skunks move slowly, they kind of waddle along on the ground, so they're easy prey, especially with that white stripe down their back. That's kind of like a landing strip for him. He sees that white stripe and he knows exactly how to catch that skunk. All right, and they ask how much he weighs. Mm -hmm. He varies depending on the time of year. Right now, he's probably, well, I didn't usually like three. Yeah. You may have to repeat that. The boys are smaller than the girls. So Houdini usually is like three, maybe not great horn now. She's just closer to four pounds. Yeah, she's much, much heavier than he is. So not a whole lot, but enough. Would he hunt a cat? He would hunt a cat. <laughs> You definitely need to be careful with your, your cats being outside because um, great horned owls will hunt for cats. And the great horned owls sometimes are sort of mean. Like most animals hunt to eat the food. Sometimes great horned owls just hunt for fun. So they might hurt a cat or another outside animal and not even eat them, which is very sad. So if you have outside cats, be very, very careful. All right. Any other questions, guys? Houdini is so cool. He is so cool, isn't he? <laughs> and the lighting is pretty good right now. His eyes probably look super bright on the video. They do. Mm -hmm. So their eyes are kind of cool because his are very yellow, but sometimes our great horned owls, their eyes are a little bit more orange. So just like humans, animals can sometimes have different color eyes too. If you see the great horned owl or what looks like a great horned owl with like bright pumpkin orange eyes, it's not a great horned owl. That's a whole other kind of owl in Europe. <laughs> Eagle Owl. Yeah. He is really amazing. I do miss Squam also. Aww. We yeah. miss Squam too. <laughs> if anyone knows Squam, Squam was our barred owl. Yeah. He passed away almost two years ago now. Okay. Um, but he used to be used for a lot of our education programs. Would they share territory with a red-shouldered hawk? Hmm. Probably not. Um, the red-shouldered hawks tend to like the more marshy areas. And though great horned owls live pretty much everywhere, um, they don't really go for the marsh all that often. That's a good question. They will share territory with a red-tailed hawk. Yes, with the red-tailed hawk, definitely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Well, thank you for joining us at Tales of Two. I'll let the camera stay on the owl. I'm not as cool. <laughs> <laughs> and we will see you all again tomorrow. Hopefully you enjoyed this little lesson. Um, I also want to mention to you guys that have been watching for a long time, if you have any topics that you want to learn about, put them down in the comments. We're always looking for new ideas that you guys are interested in. It. So thank you again. Um, check out our Facebook page and check out some of our other videos if you're just joining us for the first time. We've got like three months worth of them, so that interests you. So thanks again, guys. Have a good afternoon.